Who likes a beer by now? <laughs> I love beer. I love beer in a lot of fashions. Uh, for me, I love the technology about beer. It's fascinating. We have a boiling process. We have fermentation. It's beautiful. I love the science about beer. It's really crazy. I want to come back in 100 years and see where all those things I'm struggling with right now, how they resolved it. It's probably damn simple, but I just didn't figure it out yet. <laughs> I like to have a beer, but I also like the community of brewers. And wherever you go, I grew up in Belgium, and if you talk with Belgian brewers, we talk. We talk. There's no industry where we talk like we talk as brewing technologist. We exchange ingredients, we exchange um, problem solving, like nothing, an industry like this. So how could they like, come there? It's a little bit of a long walk. I was really, when I was a student, I was very fascinated by biology and uh, of all things, organic chemistry. Um, so I did my, in Belgium, you had to do an in uh, or an, uh, an acceptance examination for the university, and I did it about genetic engineering. Um, and that was 1982, and genetic engineering was really on the fringes of where it is now. Um, and from there, I went into, um, I think you would probably call it uh, bioscience engineering here. So it was called chemistry, option biochemistry. Um, and we were working with microliters and nanograms, and that was kind of very boring. <laughs> and we had a brewing department in our university, and they were running around with their boots on and moving hoses and moves, moving actually real amounts of liquids that you could even try out, if they liked them or not. And so I decided to go in that direction, and I became a brewer. <laughs> so. After some army duty, we still had mandatory army duty. The Berlin curtain hadn't come down yet. Um, I started. I had the opportunity to start in a brewery. It was actually a very cute brewery in Belgium, and I became responsible there for brewing and fermentation. Wow, a young brewing engineer, and right away you come in a brewery and you can take up this responsibility. They also, I think. Afterwards, scene tested me out a little bit because um, you have regular brewing engineering, and within brewing, we typically use one microorganism, Saccharomyces cerevisiae, and that's it. And we have different species within that, and we can make flavorful beers within that. But this brewery was also using, oh, sorry, first of all, using a lot of Saccharomyces cerevisiae, and also some mixed cultures in there, from lactobacilli and all names that most brewers would scream if they hear them. But that was a mixed culture that I had to work with, and they just had, um, they, we were still fermenting in 54 relatively small copper, square fermenters, and they had bought eight shiny stainless fermenters, stain, uh, cylinder conical fermenters, and they're like, well, you're the new guy, you need to get the beer into there, and you will have to make it taste the same. Wow. It took me two years or something, and a bunch of investments before I got this mixed culture to transfer to there, because the Saccharomyces cerevisiae really loved to go over there, but my lactobacilli didn't want to. And so I had to kind of, hey, lacto, you can do it, come on, be good. <laughs> so it was a really beautiful challenge and for a young brewing technician to be able to do something like that. And I love brewing technology is where I started. I also love the science part about it. It's really fascinating, I think, as a science. It's always used as the example of um, where biochemistry started. And to this day, I always carry a little notebook when every day you learn. Hey, when you leave the university, that's when really it starts learning. So every evening or the morning after, depending on my headache, I transfer <laughs> uh, this knowledge that has been accumulating during the day back in my book. It's an electronic file that I have been 
keeping sincere, however I mean brewing. And so for me, huge opportunity, but a lot of love also for the science and the technology, but there was some a passion somewhere completely else at that point. I was a very intense cave climber at that point. We did the deepest of the world, and we, oh, we worked with explosives. I shouldn't tell you all the things that we did. But we discovered, we mapped a bunch of caves in Jamaica. Um, and it's also where I met my wife. And when we got married later on, um, there was a new passion there. And we had already brewing, caving, and now traveling. Hmm. What do we do with it? Oh, oh. We were young, so maybe we were stupid also. And so we decided uh, that uh, we should translate our little passion also in something else. And we started home brewing, and that was kind of fun, but I couldn't drink all the beer that we were home brewing, plus drinking the beer that I was making professionally. So we bought a larger ton, and then we're like, oh, where do we go with this equipment? And so it ended up in a brew pub in um, Belgium, in Harelbeke, the Zwingel, and a bunch of passion, a bunch of love, a bunch of talent that got channeled in way to busyness. We both had a, um, a full-time job at that point, and we were running this in the weekend, brewing in the weekend, selling in the weekend. So the travel passion kind of got interrupted with this, and suddenly we met some people from... Uh, another continent, Kim and Jeff from New Belgium. And suddenly, all this love and talent ended up in a whole different continent, in a small town called Fur Collins that you may be familiar with. Um, and in New Belgium, we just had moved in this new building. That site was not there. We were only with 30 people when I started in 96. And wow, there was so much opportunity. Yeah. As a brewing engineer, just the, kind of the, the basics of brewing, I, I, I could do so much there. And it really went back to nuts and bolts for me, where huh, you, you just could come in and change things that had to be changed. Welds, I, I cannot name it. It was very simple, but it was back to nuts and bolts. Really, for me, back to that technology part where I kind of had left off a while and I funneled it into a brew pub. But it was way more than that for me, the, um, than the technology part. And after we got that kind of squared away, there was a guy, Matt Lewis, uh, who walked in. And he's, and I'm going to bastardize the name of the lab because it's called Pro uh, metabolomics and proteomics lab. That's probably how it's named, actually. Um, and so they came, hey, we did a study, and we bought some beers from the shelf from For Collins Brewery, Odell's Brewery, and New Belgium, and we looked at it, and we use a machine, a UPLC MS, and we get 5,000 fragments from this beer, and then we started to plot that in a PCA plot, and we were looking what the differences were in between those beers, so we were hoping that at least the wheat beers were going to group, Easy Street and uh, Sunshine Wheat, and maybe the hoppy beers were going to group, or something along those lines. And know what happened from a statistical analysis? The For Collins beer brewery, uh, brewery beers ended up in a cluster. Odell's ended up in a cluster, and New Belgium ended in the cluster. So I took Matt to... Odell's and uh, for Collins Brewery, and we kind of looked around, and yeah, there's some ingredients and there's some process difference, but brewing is brewing. And really, from, uh, for, to explain those 5,000 analytes that we got from those results, we couldn't really or make any reasonable explanation. There was also no science on why it would be different. So we started looking, uh, and the only thing I can control is New Belgium. So, okay, let's take this to New Belgium, and we're going to look into this cluster and see how we can separate this data out, maybe what is really driving this data set. And so we started brewing fat tire with a different yeast strain and sunshine weed without wheat, and uh, we stain, changed spices on 1554, just to kind of identify, and we're like, oh, wow, this is, that's the spice of 1554, and that is wheat. And so we started identifying some of those components. Yeah, kind of fun, you know, this was a Friday, 
every month that we had some beers and uh, based on the analysis that we saw we decided on what we were going to test the next month and then we had beers again on a friday is this useful this is i think maybe more in the talent side um, so how could we leverage this for new belgium and one of the leverage points that we found was maybe we should start looking at aging because i have a taste panel 25 people roughly a day that come to taste panel who are statistically significant as a whole but it takes them four months to say hey that fat tire was better shelf life wise than the other fat tire and then you're going back to the data what was the difference between those two fat tires well we found the component one of those five thousands um, that actually matched up very well with the aging of our beers and so in one day, we could actually tell if this one was going to be better or worse. Oh, wow. Some love and talent that suddenly gets translated in, in maybe something that could be useful for life. That is the science part. I'm going to divert a little bit. I'm going to go from science to the more creative part now. We were fermenting with a different microorganism, and uh, what we found is whatever you did with a bottle, uh, you poured it out in the glass, and it layered itself in two different layers. You could make black and tan, a completely natural black and tan. Really fascinating, eh? And because if you see how they pour in a bar of black and tan, and we just could do, do it. We just poured it out, and we had it. So now we can do horizontal layers. What would be nice if we hmm, could make this? vertical layers <laughs> and so uh, coming from belgium i thought the belgian flag would be fun uh, if we have a beer and uh, uh, over there you see the belgian flag and over there you see the belgian flag that would be funny <laughs> technically it would be hard easier if the black would be in the middle because the darkest part in uh, the longest dimension to the glass unfortunately it's not that but maybe maybe after this we could make the american flag Red, white, red, white. Hmm, those stars. <laughs> I don't know about that. This is beer. This was the inspiration for the beer. We were sent with two people from Phil Benstein and I uh, to Belgium, and we had to come back with an ID for the beer. This was our ID. If you look to this, this architect, um, late 1800s, um, he uses everything. And the support beam, the light that you maybe hardly see, the wall, the floors, the stairs, it all flows together to create a piece of beauty. So when we came back from Belgium, we're like, we're going to create a beer like this. It's going to be very difficult, and it's going to be beautiful. And people were like, oh, wow, those guys. So we created the beer, actually, and we created it with five legs. Uh, I, typically, if I think about the beer, I think in components that you're going to bring together. And it was five technically difficult legs, but I can explain them to you, but it's kind of completely useless because a beer is only 10 minutes of pleasure, and uh, I'm going to be talking more than 10 minutes. This is, we just wanted to create beauty, like this picture. And for me, this is where beer should go. We need to create only 10 minutes of pleasure. We don't have to talk too long about it because after first sip, you taste it and you're like, oh, and you go on with your conversation. And that's what we are, this is what we are about as brewers. It's not much more than that. So this was uh, for me a huge inspiration on how to create beer. And it was also something that I developed after um, when I started in, um, in the US, people were always, we had AC Burger and Odell's at that point, and there were a few other CB pots uh, in Fort Collins, and AC Burger was doing German style, and uh, Odell's was doing at that point English style, and then we had New Belgium in Belgian style. And people were asking me, what is Belgian style? Coming from Belgium, I didn't really know. And so <laughs> the German style, I think, is really easy. And they have a Reinheitsgebot created way too long ago. And they say, beer, three ingredients. That's all. Imagine 
if you're a chef, I we say, you're going to uh, get a restaurant, but you're only going to use three ingredients. Really? Really? We need to create beauty. How are we going to create beauty with those three ingredients? And so it's something that I kind of make up, made up, but to try to explain how we make Belgian beer. First of all, this is how it feels for a Belgian brewer. Uh, this is really, uh, are you going to force me into this? Um, this, I don't know how to say that, where you, they tie you up and uh, um, are those my limitations? I think in Belgian brewing, there's only three ingredients and there's knowledge, experience and creativity. And so if you're going to create a new beer, we're going to take 20% of experience and 30% of creativity and then we fill it up with knowledge and we have a beer. This is how beer should be created, and that's how we kind of create beers in New Belgium. Hmm. Love and talent. Kind of see your story. Yeah, I started with as genetic engineering in, uh, uh, when I was 18. Uh, ended up in a brewery. Started our brew pub. Uh, ended up on a different continent, and finally could be very creative in in creating beer. And then I get to work for a company that states also that we are here for a to manifest our love and talent. We are a business that will show that a business can be a force of good. Why shouldn't we? Hey, it's all about lo your love and talent. I followed my love and talent. So 10, 30 years maybe from here, what are you gonna talk about? Thank you. <laughs>